Oh my god, we need breath Eliza. Breath Eliza. Hi family, hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. <laughs> we go to the high court. Today, I think we need a breath Eliza. We really need a breath Eliza. Just for control, you know. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, we really need it. Yeah, family, it is so sad that we no longer have respect and trust in Judge, in Judge Rata Mohadling. There is nothing like 0%, honestly. The way he handles this case, uh, it looks like he doesn't care about 50 years of experience. <laughs> he really doesn't care. Yeah. No, uh -uh. said. Can we talk about the conduct of the judge? Can we? I think we should. But before we do that, let's do this. Let's talk about our conduct as um, the family and friends of this channel. Let us like, subscribe, and comment on the section below so that the channel can grow. Uh, with that being said, let's take a listen to the legal mind about the judge's conduct. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having us. Well, the, the role of the judge in legal proceedings is to uh, make sure that the trial runs as efficiently as and effectively as possible. Um, he must make sure that the legal representatives who are in court, they present their cases in a procedurally fair way. So he must make sure that the state is able to present its case effectively, but also that defense lawyers are able to uh, present their cases fairly and represent their clients fairly um, and, and protect the rights um, of, of all people in the courtroom. But the most important thing, I think, is to uphold um, the dignity and respect of the court. Mm -hmm. So in, 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 he must make sure that everyone in court behaves orderly and that they themselves as the judge they also behave orderly so they, they are basically the um, the umpire in, a, in the court proceedings let's expand on that magazine what do the ethical rules of conduct actually say about such behavior as well as utterances i mean there has been a few remarks in which the very same judge was seemingly uh, said to be unfair to the defense counsel i remember a heated exchange between him and advocate in Sholo a while back saying that she had shouted at him and that uh, she should have communicated like a professional and we saw that uh, the advocate had denied this and of course the matter was never reported Yes, so the, the ethical rules for judges are laid out in the Judicial Code of Conduct as the, as the primary tool, but also some of them are unwritten. They've been developed over a number of years that uh, court uh, judgments have spoken about judicial ethics. So one of the rules that are really important and are relevant in this situation is Article 5 and Article 9 of the Code of Conduct. Article 5 says that the judge must always act honorably um, when they are inside and outside of court. And then Article 9 is very specific and applies to uh, court proceedings and this it says that the first of all the judge must observe the commonly accepted rules of decorum so the judge must uh behave themselves in a way that uh, affirms the dignity of the courts, like I said. But secondly, the judge must uh, also ensure that they pay respect to everyone in court, whether they are a, a litigant, whether they are a lawyer, whether they are a member of the general public. The judge must make sure that everyone's dignity is respected and they do not discriminate against anyone in, in the court proceedings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, looking and listening to this judge, I can tell you, the accused are already being sentenced 10 life sentences for each you know i honestly i am so worried they are already sentenced finish and clear let's take a listen to the judge and the advocates standoffs and you'll be the judge that accused number three was in possession of this device on the 26th of October 2014. Wait, wait. On the day. Wait. Oh, my God, may I just. No, 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 no
I started my daughter. I the started. Court, the court must be placed in a position to I understand. Because this daughter. witness, wait, wait. Okay. This witness, mm. listen, I, mean, I was in this court. This witness never confirmed the presence of accused number one, two, three, four, five. He confirms the presence of a number. And the points, I guess, I guess, am I correct? But no, this is a section 205 on the number. Uh, oh, please, the, uh, I have a of the, of the number no. where the number was in that area. The no. number, not the person. The, the, the watch. May I, request, may I request the court? That's not me saying that, it's him saying may that. May I request the court not to be impatient? May I request the court to be patient and I'm listen very to patient. No, my lord, I'm, I disagree with you. I don't no. want to fight a dialogue with you. Okay. My question, my concern is that just now to correct that accused number three, I'm putting to this witness now right. that from eight o'clock, I'm, I'm specific now, from eight minutes past eight, according to this record, he was in possession of the cell phone. Okay, fine. Until the 30th. I'm being specific. Yes. I don't talk about other days prior. Now, I'm putting to you, Mr. Host, accused number three, I put it as a fact now. You can disagree with me? I put it as a fact that on the 8th, on the, on the 26th of October 2014, at eight minutes past eight, as with reference to page 10, of exhibit he was in possession of that device. Hey, Utunu Judge, confused, I mean, Utini, Utini Judge, that's where, this is where I call for help and say, Brother Liza, 911. <laughs> My witness, wait, wait, this witness doesn't talk about locality of a person. This witness talks about the locality of a device. Mr. Holmes, is a That's it. So I'm not talking about the accusement. Uh, no, my daughter. No, no, no. The court must not take its own way. No, no, no. Of finding the person. No. I'm saying there's evidence here. GG. Yeah. It talks about accus number three. The instruction that was, the request that was made to, to Mr. Hose was in relation to five accus. Accus number three is one of them. This is the 16th of June 2020. That phone has never been returned to him upon his arrest. So far as he knows, it's still in the possession of the police. Accused one of you. Oh, so, 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 thank you for correcting me. Accused number two. Okay, you started like that? That's... Yes. We take him to the speed in. We said on class 16, which on 2020. I guess we have a phone. I'll to make sure I'll do it. I'll find the suspect, and your intention is to arrest him. What is the protocol? before you bring the suspect into your police vehicle. You must search him. I tell you, my dear, 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 And if you search the suspect, any object, device, that you find on the suspect, what do you do with that? Put it into evidence. Dealing with a cell phone here, you 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 know that the offence for which you are investigating may also involve cell phone evidence. What is the protocol of handling a cell phone from the scene? Uh, you switch it off. But any offender and some mutale a cell phone. Now, with and how come Untanzi had his phone? How come Untanzi was not searched after hearing what Oram Sipile said and and Khos just uh, confirmed? How come he was never searched? And how come the phone was never confiscated? It doesn't make sense. He's saying it was taken. It means they followed the protocol. They followed the procedure. But somewhere, somehow, is not making sure. And I hope a judge with, would note this as he does his um, a judgment. He will note this contravention. He would note this discrepancy. Because 
obviously, for obvious reasons, I choose number one, uh, sorry, I choose number two, is already incarcerated in that police station. Police station. But in terms of the protocol that you and I understand, this phone shouldn't be pinging any tower because it's supposed to be switched off at this point in time. Would you agree? That is fair to put to the witness because Sergeant Mohani denied that they confiscated the phone. Yeah. Now the proposition is put as if the phone was confiscated, and that, that might perhaps. That's the witness. Yeah, uh, I'm not saying my land friend is doing that. But this witness, if somebody has transgressed or infringed the protocols, <coughs> how would he know? And how does it assist this court? That's good. I mean, you know, Nyatabanga, this will help a court very much in so many ways because like he is a judge of 50 years experience now if you understand that there is a contention between uh the suspect and the uh, police officers they say they didn't take the phone he uh, and the suspect said they took the phone but you are the judge right hearing that will help you to make your decision and to to come to your understanding of what happened and this will show you that the protocol was never followed and what does that mean this mean fabrication fabrication cooking 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 to the highest degrees celsius Yes. 
sisters, we say, no, no, no. Only that device was here, but the person may not have been somewhere yes, else. Yes, I can't say that. But in this case, according to you, your client was in Valeria. Yes. According to you. Yes. That's it. So what are we talking about? My Lord, perhaps, you, you, you see, my Lord, I But he never had a phone. And I like to be very blessed that Gomez will be sent to me. I am not that kind of a person. My Lord has got a tendency to be impatient. I'm sorry, 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 I'm